finished sheet mulching in November 2010, and from there, the whole plan was to just let it sit for a good five months. We held a design charrette on campus, which involved over 100 different participants coming from all different departments on campus. We had students, faculty, administrators, and we had people from the local community, and even students from other colleges that drove over an hour and a half to get here all on a Saturday afternoon to participate in the design of the campus permaculture garden, which is huge. You know, just the fact that we had that many people come on a Saturday to design a garden just really shows the movement, the momentum that this project has created in the local community. What I didn't know is how inspiring the, the undergrads would be to me. So I'm a slightly older grad student and I'm the only one in the group and all these 20-somethings are kind of blowing my mind with their energy. There's this renewed energy towards healing the earth issues like food systems that are broken and um, agriculture systems and just living in a manner that's more sustainable. And I feel like the students really get that already and it's been fun to watch. When we started un uncovering um, you know, some of the wood chips and exposing some of the cardboard that had about you know, halfway broken down at this point, the soil seemed very alive. You know, we noticed that there was a whole fungi network that had taken place. We noticed that there were worms, um, probably about 15 to 20 worms every square foot. So what we're talking about here are some of the uh, things we're putting in the planting hole. The basic um, premise or the operating assumption is that we're trying to create an environment that's optimal for the plants to manifest their full potential. So our objective is to get a healthily functioning digestive tract that has access to all the food it needs so that plant can grow you know, strong and healthy. So we want to have a, a full nutritional profile, mineralogical, biological, etc., cetera, um, of everything that plant would like to have so it can realize its yields, growth, flavor, nutrition, pest disease resistance attributes. So there's a lot happening right here. There's, there's a people space, uh, it's a production space, it's, it's, um, it's got areas where uh, stormwater is being infiltrated off of some of the sidewalks. It's, uh, it's got water tanks for collecting rainwater at some point. Uh, so, so it's, it's going to a space that's going to do a lot of different things and, and not just be food production for the dining commons. The permaculture garden here is a little bit less about, about nutrients and serving students the food, although that's critical to the education, which I think is the main purpose of this garden. Hands-on experience and classroom experience are two completely um, important things. I think they need to work together. Students really want to participate. They want to get out there and gain first-hand experience in food growing and, and working with water in the landscape and in building houses and maintaining all of our human systems. And Folks just crave this experience of learning um, by doing. What's incredible is that you know UMass right now is really one of the first uh, public institutions in the entire nation that's doing permaculture like this directly on the campus and making it extremely accessible for students everywhere to come here to get involved, to grab a shovel in between classes and be really a part of their campus sustainability initiative. So now we're at this point where we've planted a lot of things, probably about 50 to 100 different species and we are you know, just on our way to making this permaculture garden that's going to be a model for campuses across the entire nation.